Hey, Chanel here with another SoBit. Today's topic is one of my least favorite one to teach, <laughs> but yet the most important. And why I don't like to teach it is because nobody understands it. <laughs> it's a very simple concept. Uh, and people just seem to have a hard time wrapping their heads around it. Um, and I don't know, I mean, all I can do is keep trying to show them, trying to show them, and then I, it locks in their brains, but um, I don't know. I don't know if they know the importance, why so much. They have to go to design school to understand pattern making and things like that, to really understand the importance of it. But have you ever bought like a shirt or something, or even pants, um, and you, you wear it, and then all of a sudden your side seams start to walk around to the front of you? that's when your grain lines are off. So grain lines are the way the thread runs in your fabric. The fabric is woven correctly, you just cut it out incorrectly. You don't honor the grain line that's on the pattern that the designer puts there when they're draping and making the pattern. And then you are supposed to put that you, that grain line that they give you onto the grain line of the fabric. And when you just put it on the fabric anywhere, you get a mess. So, and there's even like Levi jeans, they actually purposely cut the left leg off grain so that they can squeeze it into the width of the fabric. So if you ever see them, they're like not the real expensive ones, but the Levi jeans, so the, the grain line, that side seam right there, it's not the grain line, the side seam, but the side seam will wrap around to the front of the foot. So grain line is how the fabric hangs straight on our bodies. So it's really important. I actually found this picture right here of a beautiful dress. Look how smooth this is. Um, might have been airbrushed, but <laughs> um, this garment could not lay that smoothly and straight with it being, if it were off grain at all. You have some um, ripples here, but it's not sheet metal, but it's, that's just from the body, fold, you know, like rolling kind of thing. So even that model has rolls, no. <laughs> no. Um, but fabric needs to just lay straight and it's, you gotta honor the grain line. So I'm gonna try to explain it to you. Um, I even looked in my old trusty Vogue sewing book and could not find. Actually, I didn't look deep, but I just went to the index and grain lines. It's one little blurb on page 68, right up here about grain lines. It just says, most often says the heavy solid line with arrows at either end indicates the direction of the grain. That's the grain line that is written on the pattern. And it's just straight. I'll show that to you with little arrows on it. Um, most often it runs parallel to the fabric selvage. So first you gotta know what the selvage is on the fabric. Um, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't, didn't give a lot of info. I have gone to the internet too to look up how other people try to teach grain lines and um, have not found the, like the best way yet. But I think it's just a little bit of showing it, showing it, showing it that starts to make sense. So the reason for it is you want your garments to hang straight. So I also have, this is Looming 101. <laughs> How a fabric, a woven fabric is made. Knits are made a little differently. They're actually looped together. Um, kind of strange. I, said, I went to NC State. They have a great textile program there. Um, you go down in the basement, it's all these looms and knit looms. They actually will make a fabric in a circular way, like the knits. And um, so, um, knits are a different story. That's why my beginners, I always want them to sew on wovens at first so that they understand the concepts of fabric weaving, um, the characteristics of fabrics before they get into a knit because um, knits have a whole different characteristic. But anyway, back to the loom. So this loom, um, so you got to think about, here's the, the bar where it um, ends. It gives you the width of the fabric. So this ends up becoming the selvage of the fabric when it's cut off. Um, and you'll see selvages are look differently. Some have little frays on the end, some are completely bonded, um, that kind of stuff. So 
I think, I don't know if I showed you my other show bits, but I'll show you. Then, so you have all these threads coming down. They could be like 50 yard bolts. So they're 50 yards going one way. I have no idea how they make these in large quantities like this. It could even be 100 yard bolts and more. Um, big factories do this. All these threads coming down. Then there's a, another thread, do, 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 up, down, up, down, basic weaving that comes in and creates the fabric. Nice basic woven. You also have little different patterns. Like it might go down one, up three, down one, up three, down like that kind of stuff. That creates like satin weaves, twill weaves. There's different patterns in here and that's how you get different fabrics. Um, then you have the jacquards. Don't know how those are made, but <laughs> um, those don't tear or anything either. Those are a little differently. That's when the design is woven into the fabric. So there's designs that are printed onto the fabric, then there's designs woven into a fabric. So whole science behind that four-year program at NC State, if you really want to know it. <laughs> so basic one, 101 loom on woven fabrics. Um, so on a pattern in here, they the number one thing for me on how to do a to look at is the grain lines on this. This is this pattern here. This is a pattern that they're not making anymore. But I, when my students get out of 101, I have them make this pattern next because it's a simple skirt. But there's there it's a skirt with weird looking pattern pieces that you like well that's not a skirt but um i love it because it's got one piece that's on the bias and then there's these other like weird it's asymmetrical skirt so it's like a um, your left side's a little different than your right side that kind of stuff and that this is the actual pattern if you open it um and then there's the pattern pieces so you got the shapes of the pieces and then you see those lines in there nobody pays attention to these these are the grain lines these lines are supposed to run parallel to the selvage on the length grain. I'm going to show that to you. Um, so real important for this whole skirt to hang straight. You don't just pop it on anywhere. These are called the cutting layouts. And if I put this over on this side, this is how you cut some of these pattern pieces. Well, actually, I'll show you on this one. This one right here is all, there's only four pieces on there. and these are actually shown, to, um, there's the grain line right there. They're all in the, the, the pattern shapes and the grain lines. These are all running parallel to the selvage. You see how they're now going all parallel to the selvage. And then these were the shapes, which they're just kind of all in here weird. But that's where the designer drafted this whole pattern and starts with it hanging straight and then moves the pattern pieces around to create the look. So that's how it works. So um, I'm going to give you a little example on some fabric, what this grain line's about, and then I'm going to show you on a dress form um, how it's supposed to hang. Okay, here we have a basic bolt of fabric. This is a 45 inch wide. It's a cotton flannel, just woven very basic um, wise. This right here is the selvage of the fabric. Right here, that's the end bolt. That's where it was uh, put right here. These are like the two selvages. And then this is the width. That's the length. So it's be like, the. this is the length, the whole length of the bolt. This is the width. The fabric only goes so wide. This one happens to be 45 inches wide. And then, um, so there's, and then there's the bias, uh, which is a whole other story, but it's okay. <laughs> so this is the selvage. You see how this one has the frayed edges right here? That's because it was cut off the loom right there. Some will just be very bonded. Some will have a whole bunch of holes in here. That's where the, it's tacked there. Um, so this is selvage right there, selvage. That tells you which way the length grain is running, okay? That's these threads right here. They're running straight down. Then you have your cross grain going up, down, up, down, making the fabric. And actually, if you look at this right here, there's a cross grain being torn out. So that's why I like flannel. You can actually pull these pieces out. So there is some, eventually they stop. <laughs> but right here, you see the little phrase here. That's the length grain. Here's another, it's a cross grain being um, 
that means that this is actually very straight. You'll see, um, actually this is a piece of fabric right here, that here is a torn little frayed edge right here. That means it was torn and I found the exact cross grain. This is the selvage on this fabric and these are this lays nice and even. On this other side you can see this is where it was cut off the bolt so it was just cut. So if you try to match these pieces up here all this can get wonky when you try to work with it. So first off when you're cutting out a um, garment you got to make know where your cross grain in is and your length grain. I see a lot of um, sewing classes where they don't teach um, anything about grain lines, and to me, it I mean it's key to uh, proper sewing. So, um, so we got length grain here, length grain there. The length grain is the strongest grain, so you'll have. I mean, it doesn't have any give to it. Um, actually shouldn't say that to any because some fabrics actually do if there's a little bit of lycra in it or um, anything spandex so strong grain if you kind of go off like this you see the stretch that's because it's getting wonky and that's what your garment will look like if you move it off the, the grain of what the pattern is telling you um, and it, um, that's what you want it to so it should be nice and straight the cross grain across here is it's cross grain has a little bit of give to it like that. So I always think of cross grain as going across your body, like around your body, because it's a little bit softer. It moves a little bit easier, that kind of thing. So if you actually were to cut a garment, like I say, waist down on the cross grain, this would stretch out and it would just look terrible. What if you put a pocket on here and you're like putting your hands in the pocket like that? All this would stretch, stretch, stretch out. And worse yet, if it was on like off grain and it would really be stretching. It'd be looking like that when you're wearing it. Now there's another grain in here and that's a 45 degree angle going straight through the length in the cross grain and that's called the true bias right here. And that just has a beautiful drape to it. It will actually fold evenly and that's what they make bias cut skirts and um, any kind of garment and they're usually smaller because when you go on your bot on the body they actually have a natural stretch and they'll hug your body like that and they just have a real pretty drape to it so um, that's what you call the bias uh, grain line so you got your length grain that runs up and down the selvage of the fabric and the selvage is just that end part so you got your length grain then you got your cross grain and then you have your bias grain um, Bias grain is a whole other thing. We'll get into that later. So then actually you could clip the fabric here and tear it. It will tear perfectly even right down the cross grain right there. It cannot go crooked because it's running right down that stitch. So a lot of times I'll go to fabric stores and if they don't know about fabric, I'll ask them to tear it so that I can actually bring it home in a nice even piece, not looking like this. How do you say? Not looking like that, <laughs> all crooked. Um, and they, they go, oh, it ruins the fabric. What it does is it kind of puckers one little part, but you iron, like this fabric, it's like nothing ruined. You just iron that over. I do have another fabric. It does ruin about a quarter of an inch of the fabric, but so what? This is actually worse being ruined here, whatever word that means. But look at that, it's a nice straight, straight piece like that. So sometimes you're making stuff and it's gotta be squares, it's perfectly straight. So now I wanna show you how a little bit further into this, how a, a square piece would, of this fabric would look on a dress form. Okay, so I have a square piece of fabric here I have the selvage here. I can tell it's the little bonded part. It's got little fuzzies here. Not to be confused with the cross grain that I tore also has it. That's where it can get a little um, confusing. But if I wanted to know, I would pull this nice and tight woven here versus here has a stretch to it. So I know the length grain is a strong grain. It's going down the selvage. So I put um, 
this line here, you can just put it anywhere on there, um, and it is parallel to the selvage, completely parallel to the selvage. So parallel ones alongside, evenly against each other. So it's parallel. Then the cross grain went uh, the other way. I don't know the word for that. There is a word. Perpendicular? I don't know. <laughs> so this is how a designer will start. They'll start with the, they'll get a block of fabric and they'll start um, right here's your center front and they'll start their design uh, with that lathe grain that's right on the fabric, right into the uh, center front right there. So that is exactly right on there. The cross grain runs right across too, so they're going to watch that this goes uh, evenly around that part there. And then your bias grain is going like that. <laughs> And has that stretch to it. So basically that's how you want your garment to hang. So if you actually had a dress like bodice and you just popped it anywhere on your garment, you might end up with, let's say you just went a little off right here. And so you're, you know, just popped it on there and you were wearing it like this, you'd have like these wrinkles kind of going all over the place. It'd be like not real smooth. So um, that's the importance of making sure that your length grain is going straight up and down so that you, I lost my picture, but so that you get that uh, look that was in that light green dress, just like sheet metal. So it looks straight. So you don't want it all bubbly all over the place. You don't want this side seam walking over to your front. What it's doing trying to find its center so so grain lines just you know google them or google it see if you can try and understand it more and then really pay attention to your cutting layouts and stuff and all of it starts to really make sense because it's a very very simple um how do you say it? process it's a it's a simple something <laughs> can't even say the words but just you got you just got three you got the length grain the cross grain and the bias grain the bias, I'll show you, I'm going to do another so bit about working with bias. And it has a nice, beautiful stretch to it, like that will go around curves and, ooh, got a motorcycle out there. Tough guy. Anyway, but um, more to learn on there. See you in the next so bit.